Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. My name is Scrote, and we are taking a look at From the Depths today. More specifically, this is a new series I'm doing called a Let's Learn, where I'll be going over all the basics of the game. And if you follow along by the end, you should have a very firm grasp on what you can do in the game and just a good understanding of how to navigate the GUI systems, how to understand the different block types, and essentially how to do things like build basic AI, uh, custom cannons, custom laser systems, uh, planes, ships, the whole shebang. We'll be looking at all the basics. Now, something you should note, I won't be going into any theory in this, and I won't be looking at the most efficient ways to do things. Really, the whole point of this is to dispel the complexity of the game and distill it down into something that is usable and understandable for you. So in this very first episode we're looking at here, I'm going to be telling you all about the movement and the different keys and the different GUI systems that uh, you can look at in the game, and that'll be a good start, I think. And to do that, I'm going to be going into the vehicle designer, and from there we will be taking a look at all of these different keys and movements and GUIs. So let's do just that. So first and foremost, when, once you get into the game, WASD are your movement keys. W and S to move forwards and backwards, and A and D to strafe left and right. And these are pretty basic, and you'll be, you'll be getting a lot of use out of those. Now next up, we have the tab key. Tab will alter your player perspective. As you can see here, essentially you are in first person mode to start like this. You press tab, you're now in third person mode. And this is a, uh, this is a free look, or a free form camera, I should say. You can pan around the battleground uh, using the WASD keys when you're in this mode. Something else you may want to note when you're in this mode, you can press Alt to go down. You can press Space to go up. And that's uh, on top of just being able to use your mouse to look around while you're holding W to just fly in that direction. And another great key to know about here, when you're in this third person mode, this freeform camera, you can hold the Shift key to essentially double your speed. So let's watch. I'm going to move away a little bit. So we're moving. Now I'm going to press shift. And look how fast we move. And then you let go of shift and you come back to normal speed. It's a great little thing to know about, especially when you're in big battles and the distances between the ships is really far. You want to get somewhere quick. Shift is your friend. So let's get back into first person mode here. And next up on the list will be space bar. Space will <laughs> jump is essentially what it is. Now, the game has two different avatars. As you can see here, I believe I am the Scuttlebot Avatar. <laughs> Look at his hand. Do, 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 do. And there's, a, there's another Avatar. I think it's like the, the Rambot or something. The difference between them is that this guy has a little helicopter on top. So when you press spacebar, if you just hold it down, you can stay up in the air longer, and he kind of hovers back down a little bit. And you can see here, if you just keep holding it, he'll just hover up and down. Which is... Oops, I hit a tab there. Which is a very cool feature. The other avatar that you can use, which let's take a look at it real quick. To get to the avatars, you press Z, you go to avatar, and you see you have two here, Rambot, Scuttlebot. Scuttlebot's got the little helicopter. I don't normally like using this guy because he's a little loud. I like Rambot. And in order to get your avatar to change, you need to exit out of the designer, go back to the main menu, and come back in. And now here we are. This is the other avatar that you can essentially start with. I really like this guy. He has no noise when he jumps. However, he lacks the feature of the sweet hovering. So, you know, just something to think about. So let's take a look at a few more things here. If you take a look at the upper right-hand side of the screen, you'll see three icons. Uh, one that says R, B, and then one that has like a tab key. So you can see when we're hitting tab, it's telling us we're changing our camera perspective. So you can totally see that changing in the, in the upper right of the screen. Now, another thing to note, when you press R, this is your repair mode. So your bot, by default, your avatar, can repair things when they're damaged. And you can enable or disable this mode, essentially. I'm not quite sure why it's there. I haven't found a use to ever disable it, so I highly recommend just to keep that enabled at all times. Definitely a good thing to do. Uh, another key of interest, this is a big one, the B key. B will invoke the build mode. And we'll be going more in-depth into this later in another episode. But for now, just know, tap B to enter build, and uh, tap B again to exit build. That's simple. So a few more things we can take a look at here. Let's spawn in a ship real quick. Now to do that, you can hit escape and then hit load vehicle. It will have a list of ships if you've built any. And we will we will just launch uh, or load one in. We'll load in, where is it at here, slender stick. So we'll go ahead and load this guy up. And I'll show you. So here you can see I have control of my cannons. 
on this ship, which is great. And the control key is what will allow me to shoot. So check it out. I, I hold control. And as I move my mouse, I'm launching my weapons. I'm, I'm firing across the board. Pretty cool. Now this, this is a pretty complex ship. He has a lot of weapon systems. So you can see there I launched torpedoes. I shot missiles. I shot the cannons. Uh, probably not the best way to go. And later we'll get into AI, which will make it a lot easier for you not to have to worry about controlling your ship or its weapons. The, the AI will do that for us, which is great. So let's go ahead and get back to a default designer here. A few more things to note. You can press the F9 key to toggle your, your GUI, your HUD. This is great when you want to take screenshots, which leads us to the next key, the screenshot key. You just tap F12. You'll hear that lovely dingleberry sound, and that means you've taken a screenshot. So that's pretty helpful. So I'm going to hit F9 again, bring the HUD back. Uh, let's take a look here. So your, your avatar, if you notice, he's got some weapons. He definitely has two arms, and you can use these. So if I left click, you'll fire the weapon that you have equipped. And you can see what you have equipped down at the bottom of the screen there. You can see I've got number one pistol. That's your default weapon that you start with. You can right click. And this will, this will swing your arm. I don't know if you can see this. Let me get outside here. So when I right click, you're sort of like punching or something. You know, oh, get, get into that melee. Getting it down, baby. And let's see. Uh, some other things to note. Let me load up another vehicle so you can see exactly what this is going to look like. We'll load up an Interceptorian. This is a flying plane. I'm going to hit Tab to get the outside view. So, now you can see, look at my camera, right? It's going crazy. It's, it's following the plane because I'm attached to my character's avatar. So a little trick you can do is double tap the N key. N as in Nancy. Hit it once, it pulls up your strategic command selector. This is where you can select ships and, and get info on them, turn uh, combat on and off, or look at uh, AI selectors. Tap it again, however, and you are back in your freeform camera mode. However, you're no longer attached to your avatar. Notice how stable the camera is. It's great. It's a really good way to uh, not only get the outside view, but get a stable outside view, which is pretty fantastic. So, a few more controls that I want to talk about. You can press at any point the Z key. Z will pull up your character sheet, and this is comprised of just all sorts of information. So, just to note a few things. Along the left here are your main tabs. So you can see we're in the buffs tab and we have a myriad of buffs here. A lot of these are not implemented in the game right now and as you fight and play in the game you will earn experience points and these experience points will be denoted down here. So you can see I'm 83.9% uh, to my next level. I'm level 128 and I've got one unused attribute point and 47 unused item points. So when you're on your buffs tab you can use your attribute points to train any of your buffs. So let's say I'm mechanic, I'm level 99, I'm now level 100, which is great. So that's essentially how the buffs work, the experience works. And also down here you have a toolbar. This toolbar is where you can set up what items you want your character to have easy access to at any point. And we'll be able to set that up here in the skills tab when we get to it. So next up, personal attributes. I believe none of this is actually implemented. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and skip over this screen for now. Later on, this it looks like these are ways to sort of specialize your character. I mean, if you mouse over some of these, Gunslinger. So it says, Gunslingers are skilled with small ranged weapons and thrown weapons. So maybe that means you'll get added bonuses and buffs to using weapons. I don't know. Something to look forward to in the future, for sure. So the Skills tab is an interesting one. Uh, you can, as you play the game, you will get, uh, you know, points to unlock skills. And you can spend those to get these. The main one I would look at is Binoculars. These are fantastic. This is the first thing I would unlock if you can. And so if you get a skill, you click it. And then you can click down in the toolbar where you want to put it. So I have it in the second slot, and that means the number two key is going to whip out my binoculars. And if we take a look at our items tab, these are the weapons and whatnot that you can unlock. And, you know, you start with the pistol. Some stuff that I would highly recommend you want to get as soon as possible is the paint sprayer. This will give you easy access to painting your ship or anything you build. And also, you know, some of these more powerful weapons, like the grenade launcher, is pretty fantastic. Because you shoot grenades. I mean, how great is that? Let's look at a few of these other tabs. Fleet colors. You can set up your your fleet colors for, you know, what you want your fleet to look like. The nice thing is this. So let's say you set up some fleet colors for your ships. Uh, if you paint your ships with these colors, and now let's say you have like 10 ships and they all have these colors. The nice thing is you can come in here, you can change these colors at any point, 
and they will alter the ships, they, all of your ship's colors that you have denoted by these, which is which is really great. This is something that uh, you can play around with later, and maybe I'll do a video on. I don't know. Now we've already looked at the avatar tabs. So you guys know about this, and the unlocks tab. So these are bits of components you can unlock in the game, like uh, laser missile defense or heat decoys. And these essentially say you need to do different stories to unlock these. Um, this is sort of self-explanatory. So if you ever get to this point and you're wanting, say, the laser missile defense system, it'll say, you know, complete the Steel Strider story mission 2, which you'll do from, from the main screen of the game. So we'll hit escape here. Let's take a look at another screen. When you're in the vehicle designer, at any point you can press X. And the X is a fantastic way to spawn enemy ships. Let's say, like, you want to watch a battle unfold, right? So let's go here, Deepwater Guard. Let's spawn in... Let's spawn in a, uh, a Wanda airship. And you can see here, when I hit spawn, when I click on it, it's going to spawn on the east as Deepwater Guard. Now here's the cool thing. Let's say I want two Wandas to fight each other. Well, all you got to do is change the faction. Let's make this next one White Flares. We'll spawn it in. And when we take a look... Somewhere. They're way over here for some reason. Hang on. Holy smokes. Look how far out that spawned. Wow. Uh, this is the map view, by the way. You can press M at any point to open the map. And this will give you a great overview of what's going on on the map. So when you click on icons on the map, what you can do is you can click this, this little teleport button when you've got like a ship selected. And that will warp you down to the ship, which is pretty cool. And here you can see our two airships we spawned in. They spawned kind of far because I had a plane that was flying really far off. But hey, look, I mean, they're fighting each other. It's pretty cool. It's a great way to watch battles unfold, test ships out. You know, you can spawn your own ships and spawn in faction ships and and really just, just watch the action unfold. I mean, you could say, I want a bunch of Shrikes to spawn in at the Steel, steel Striders, excuse me. And now look, we've got, a, we've got a bunch of Shrikes up in the air all flying around. Pretty cool. So, let's take an, uh, another look at a menu. So that was the X key. That'll pull up your spawning enemy ships. The C key will pull up your artificial intelligence control. Any ships that you own, the C key will show all of their artificial intelligence components. So here's where you can turn things off and on, turn their combat on. Uh, when you just have on, it, it won't fight. It'll, it'll just kind of fly around and move, but I generally recommend just either go combat or off. Uh, attacking salvage, what this means is if there are small bits of ships that are left around, this means your ship will continue to attack those until they are obliterated. Uh, this is especially good in the vehicle designer to hit ignore salvage, because in the campaign mode, ships will eventually disintegrate on their own after you've defeated them. In the designer, not so much, so when you have ignore salvage on, your ship will keep continue to focus on what's important, essentially. And uh, one of the other keys is the N key we've talked about. This is your strategic command view. So any ships you own, again, you can click on them. It'll zoom in to them, wherever it may be. I'm not actually sure where am I. Here it is. He's way over here. So, you know, if you have like five or six ships, this is a great way to take a look at them and, and get statistics on them. So I could turn the AI off, and you can see... <laughs> My ship is going to fall out of the sky now. He's just going to dive bomb. So I can turn that back on and he's immediately just going to pick up. It's kind of a nice view. You've also got another view. Uh, you press the E key and this kind of pulls up your forces and fleets. This is very similar to the N key, except you can actually select your units. You can select who the flagship of a fleet will be. And imagine the, flag the flagship as the centerpiece of a fleet. If you have 10 ships and one is the flagship, when the flagship moves, the other nine ships will be moving in relation to that flagship. Kind of weird to just talk about without showing you, but uh, maybe in a, in a later episode we can take a look at what that means. But this is also great because you can select a ship and you can right-click and tell the ship to go to a location. And in fact, you can even right-click and hold down the right-click and move your mouse up and down to set height, which is pretty great. So, yeah, that is, this is essentially uh, the basics of movement and sort of understanding the different GUI systems that you can invoke in the game. I know we didn't take a, a, a big look at too many other items like building or anything, but this one is just supposed to get your, your head wrapped around, you know, the different systems you can use in the game and what they mean. Especially with moving your avatar and just, just 
getting the different menus down. So yeah, we'll stop this episode here. This one went a little bit longer just because these systems are pretty complex. But if you have any questions or any comments or you're just curious about how something else works that I showed you or you're just confused, uh, drop a comment, drop a line. Uh, I'm very perceptive and uh, quick with feedback. So, you know, more than happy to help you guys out if you have any questions. So definitely let me know. Otherwise, thank you so much for stopping by, you guys. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next videos that we have. And until then, you guys take it easy and stay classy.